Maria Goretti, affectionately called Marietta by her family, was born in Coronaldo in 1890 on the eastern side of Italy. She was one of five children of Luigi and Assunta Goretti. In 1899, her father, Luigi Goretti, moved the family to La Ferriere di Conca, 40 miles from Rome, looking for a job. Luigi soon got a job as a sharecropper, and in exchange for farming work, his employer let Luigi's family stay in one of his houses. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dear, I have found a place for us to stay. Really? Yes. My employer has let us at one of his houses near the farmland. Marietta, go pack your things. Let's go to our new home. Thank you, God. This house had two floors. Luigi, Assunta, and their children stayed at the ground floor. Giovanni Serenelli, a widower, and his son Alessandro lived upstairs. Both families tried to survive together, exchanging their crops and belongings. One day, Luigi Goretti was bitten by a mosquito carrying the malaria virus. Tragically, he died 11 days later in 1900. This incident left poor Assunta to raise her five children in the new and strange town of Ferriere, all alone. God, please give me the strength to raise my kids. Thankfully, she had Maria to help her. Though a good deal of her life before her martyrdom is seemingly veiled, we normally only hear about the end. Maria Goretti was afraid that her father's soul would remain in purgatory for too long, so she prayed constantly. This habit of prayer led to a long, practiced meditation on the Paschal mystery. The rosary was constantly tied around her wrist since, and she could not go long without praying it. In order for the Goretti family to survive, Maria's mother, Assunta, took her husband's place in the fields. This left Maria, as the eldest girl, to take her mother's place in the home. Maria cooked, cleaned, did the laundry, and cared for her younger siblings. Their neighbor, Giovanni, had a drinking problem, and he was prone to loud and immodest language. But he did like Maria, like his own daughter, as she often helped them with chores. Marietta, my child, I am feeling very sick today. Do you mind cleaning the kitchen a bit? Alessandro made a mess of it, trying to cook yesterday. Don't worry, I will take care of it. Would you like to have some soup? That would be a pleasure, darling. You are such a good girl. Additionally, she cooked and cleaned for the two Serenelli men. Maria never complained about the extra work she had to do. She was a source of encouragement to her mother, assuring her mother that Jesus would provide for their needs. Maria was a pious child. Although she could neither read nor write, she learned her catechism and received her first Holy Communion with great reverence in 1901, on the Feast of Corpus Christi, she went to Mass as often as possible and grew in virtue, sanctity, maturity, and beauty. It was from Assunta that Maria learned never to sin at any cost. We belong to God totally, body and soul. Our body is God's temple, and the Spirit of God is living among us. At 11, Maria was already a beautiful young woman. Alessandro, then 19, twice made advances toward her. Stop it! Don't touch me! Alessandro, it's a sin! Alessandro was taken with Maria's beauty and had for some time tried to seduce her. He spoke obscenely to her, made lewd suggestions, and threatened to kill Maria and her mother if she told anyone. Alessandro was the typically depressed young teenager. 
His mother had died in a psychiatric hospital while he was young. Following his father's footsteps, he drank too much. Although he was once Catholic, he had fallen away. Despite his persistence, Maria did not give in to temptation. This angered Alessandro, and one day, his anger got the best of him. On a hot day in early June, Maria was sewing up a shirt while her mother and siblings were out on the farm working. Giovanni sat down to rest, saying he was sick at the bottom of the stairs leading up to where they lived. Seizing an opportunity for evil, Alessandro left his work and came back to his house. He saw his father dozing off at the foot of the stairs and went up into the house without making any sound. Alessandro snuck up on her and began to attack her. No, no, you mustn't. What you are doing is a sin. Alessandro grew even more angry when she resisted and then took out his knife and stabbed her. He then quickly left the building before anyone could see him. Alessandro's father woke up to the loud noise. When he entered the house, he found Maria in a pool of blood. Help! Help! Maria is wounded! Maria is wounded! Somebody help! Maria's body was horribly mangled. It was a miracle that she was still alive. The neighbors soon arrived and gasped when they saw their beloved Maria. They asked who did this terrible thing, and she whispered, It was Alessandro. He tried to make me do something that was a sin, but he couldn't make me do it. He couldn't. I wouldn't let him. Maria was immediately brought to the hospital in Natuno. The doctors were astonished that the girl was still alive. They said it was hopeless and she will not survive for long. A parish priest was called to give Maria her last rites. As she lay dying, when the parish priest of Natuno brought her holy viaticum and asked whether she forgave Alessandro, she replied, Yes, I forgive him, and I want him to be in paradise with me someday. Her mother, in tears, gave her the crucifix to kiss, and that comforted her. Don't worry, it is Jesus whom I shall soon see in heaven. Maria died the next day, on July 6th, at the age of 11 years and 8 months. A large crowd gathered at her funeral and each of them was aware of her martyrdom. The cops soon arrested Alessandro, and he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Because he was an angry young man in constant fights, he was placed in solitary confinement. He was completely unrepentant for his crime, and his heart was hardened. However, six years later, Maria appeared to Alessandro in a dream. In his dream, his prison cell turned into a lush garden, and Maria came to him bathed in light. She gave him 14 lilies. After he took the lilies in his hands, they turned into flaming lights. At this point in the dream, Maria told him that someday his soul would join hers in heaven. That was all too much for Alessandro. Until this point, he had been unrepentant of his crime, but immediately his heart began to soften and he wept after so many years. He called for the bishop, confessed his crime, and lived out the rest of his sentence as a reformed man and model prisoner. After his release, he sought out Maria's mother that he might beg for her forgiveness. Alessandro, Marietta forgave you. Christ has forgiven you. And why should I not also forgive? I forgive you, of course, my son. Your evil days are past. And to me, 
You are a long-suffering son. Since her death, Maria has been the instrument of numerous cures and miracles. Along with 30 other witnesses, Alessandro testified as to Maria's sanctity during her cause of beatification. In 1950, she was canonized in a ceremony attended by a quarter million people, including her mother, the first mother ever to see her child canonized. Maria Goretti is an excellent model and intercessor for today's youth, confronted by a sea of immorality poured out on the world by the modern media. She offers children and young people a refuge, protection, a serene spirit, and the deep joy of the pure of heart.